Some of you have been asking me how I do my green screen effect in some of my videos. Well, in today's All video... Right, Steph, do you want a cup of tea? Oh, no, I've got one, thanks. So, sorry, I didn't know you were filming. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, where was I? So some of you are asking how I do this green screen effect in some of my videos. Allow me to show you how. Alright, so this is the finished product and whilst this might look like something that you can buy in the shops, it's not. It's something that I've just basically put together myself out of a bunch of components that you can find either by buying online or just going out to your local craft or in my case, a place called Lincraft here in Australia which sells fabrics. So this is the finished thing. This is what it looks like when you're not doing any of the editing to get rid of the green in the background and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. But I wanted to show you how I put this together because I did a bit of research on green screens before making this myself. I actually went through two designs before I got to this. But you can also spend a lot of money by buying something pre-made online when to be honest this whole setup cost me just over $30 for everything. So here are the four components you're going to need if you want to make your own green screen. Starting with probably the most important. Number one, some green fabric. Number two, a curtain rod or a pole or just like a broomstick. Any kind of long stick will be fine. Number three, a stand of some sort. I use a lighting stand, but to be honest, anything that can hold your green screen up in the air will be fine. And number four, and I'll leave this one up to you, you can use either glue or you can sew or just basically some way to stick your green screen cloth onto your pole. Glue's not very pretty, it leaves that kind of mark down the side, but to be honest, I don't care because no one sees that. You could sew it on, you could cut some holes, make some eyelets, you can put some string around it, however you want, but you want to attach that pole across the top to your green screen so it hangs down nice and straight and you don't get any wrinkles, which to be honest are a bit of a pain to get out in post-production. Then what I did is now I've got the pole on top, I need a way to fix it to the top of that lighting stand, so I just used one of these bulldog clips. This is actually screwed into the top of this stand, so it just gives me an easy way to basically take the screen on and off and with the adjustable height, I can put the screen up as high as I want and as low as I want. So then all I need to do whenever I want to set up the screen is grab the cloth, grab the stand. It takes about 10 seconds to set it up. Done. Now like I say, this is my sort of second or third prototype I think. I did go through a couple of variants before getting to this point. I actually bought a piece of A0 sized foam core and painted it green. That kind of, that, oh, that worked okay and it kind of ended up like this, but this is big and it's solid and so you can't really store it very easily and to be honest it's not actually big enough but if that's your only option painting a bit of card green that it's not too bad as a first step but cloth I find works a lot better so let me show you how I turn that then into the videos that you see on this channel where I actually mask out the background and overlay stuff and so I use Final Cut Pro X but I know you can do this kind of keying in other applications like Premiere I'm not sure if you can do iMovie or not possibly not but in other editing packages it's probably the same but this is what I do in Final Cut Pro X and I'll I'll share the screen with you now so you can see what I'm doing so I've already got this project set up I've got a couple of videos in here at the moment one here which is just me yabbling on in front of the green screen and then this is the thing that I want to put in the background which is just a bit of footage that I shot the other day up in the SR22 the first thing I do is I drag the green screen video file into the timeline and then I do all of my masking and keying and cropping and everything on this one main video file. I don't edit and then do the green screening because then you have to do it to all the individual edits. I drag the master on, set up all the masking and everything on that and then I start to edit at that point. And the easiest way that I find, I just go into the keying section here in effects and I go to the keyer tool and literally all you do is you just drag it on to the clip and let go. And you can see instantly it's already masked out. It's, it's really clever. You don't have to tell it what color. Um, you can specify colors. You can come up here to the top right and you can set a sample color. You can do things with edges. There are, I don't really know what half of these do to be honest. I don't use a lot of these, but I drag the key in. If I need to tweak the color, I do that. Otherwise, Final Cut is actually really good at picking up the fact that you're using a green color in the background and it's already masked it off for me. Now you'll notice here on the right hand side of the screen, I've actually got an area where the green screen hasn't gone to the edge of the frame for the camera but that's not a problem because you can actually fix that with the cropping within Final Cut. So what I do is if you just come down here, just come down to the crop section on the clip that you're looking at and drag this right slider across and you can see what it does is it will crop out the right hand side of the video until 
the whole right hand side is cropped out. Now it does mean that if I'm actually sticking my hand out to the right hand side of the video, it will get cut off before the edge of the video frame, if you get what I mean. But to be honest, I'm always sitting in the left hand or the right hand third of the screen anyway, and I'm not really doing any movements like this. So it's fine just to crop that bit out. You can see as well, there's a bit at the top here and I just do exactly the same. So I go to the top slider, just bring that down. Then I have a look around the border. The top's looking good, the right's looking good. Obviously the bottom here and the left hand side. So everything's masked off nicely, ready for me to put a video file in the background. And that, to be honest, is just as easy as dragging it underneath the clip like so. I'll just get rid of the volume there. And that's it. And that's basically done. Final Cut's doing all the work for you. So you can see now, if I play this video clip, yeah, I'll just mute that. So you can see when I play it, it's done all the work for me. So it's automatically got the video in the background and then it's just got me masked over the top. There you go, just a quick tutorial video. I hope you found that useful. I know some of you were asking about some of my editing techniques and also the green screen in particular. If you're gonna do some green screening off your own and if this has inspired you to go and make some videos of your own, I'd love to see them. Let me know, you can send me a tweet to my Twitter account at Steph747 or just put a comment down in the video down below with a link to your video and see if you can share some of your green screening techniques with the rest of us. But thank you for watching. If you found that useful, do make sure you give us a thumbs up. It really helps me to know that you're enjoying this kind of content. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a lot of travel and flying content coming up and I can do more tutorials like this as well if you're enjoying this kind of thing.